Hello lovely people, welcome back here in this channel. Something good. Something good. Hello once again, good day over and over again. This is Bonnie, your HRT queen, and this channel provides everything about cross-dresser and transgender all over the universe. And for today's video, mga kabarnerians, we are going to listen again to our transgender who constantly share their experience and their life in their social media. I won't gonna take much of your time because I know that what we are going to hear today will give us a lesson and also it gives inspiration for some of our transgender all over the universe. So prepare yourself and watch this. Okay guys, so update. Um, it's actually a law that they can't change birth certificates or gender markers on IGs in the state of Kansas. So that's great. So when he said that they don't do that, they literally just don't do that. The state will no longer recognize transgender Kansans' identities, reversing birth records back to assigned sex at birth, and halting future modification, modifications of birth certificates following a federal judge's ruling. So, that's great. Let's get ready together and I'll tell you about why I knew I was trans. As you guys have heard from me before, I grew up playing with like dolls and hair and wigs and dress up and like I was obsessed with Hannah Montana, Taylor Swift, like, it was obvious. I didn't grow up thinking like, oh, there's something wrong with me, or there's this or that, I just, I wanted to be a girl, but I didn't know how that was possible, and once I got older, I was able to realize that it was possible to do that. Once I got older, I was able to go to a clinic where I could talk to the right people who were able to listen to what I had to say. So I did not just like walk in and be like, I need these medications, I need this, I need that. You cannot do that. You have to go through so much, I'm going to say like therapy to know that this is something you want to do. For me, I'm trying to think of like why I was so hesitant at first. And I feel like it was just because of the needle. And the needle is the Lupron, which you can get every month or every three months, depending on your dose. And that just blocks the puberty. It doesn't block it forever. You have to stay on it until you get your gender reassignment surgery. With the Lebron, it just allowed me to, if I wanted, to give myself more time on making sure that this is what I wanted to do. And also, if I was going to go through male puberty, which I was about to at the time, it was able to pause it for however long. Ultimately, I did decide to go through it, and I started estrogen a couple years later. So estrogen is just what, like females have. For me with the estrogen, I didn't necessarily like see anything happen to my face or like feminizing, but there are obvious things that happen when you're on it. Estrogen affects everybody's bodies differently and mine, I just felt like it took a lot longer for it to actually set in. And while you take estrogen, it gives you a higher chance at getting breast cancer. So you have to be very careful while you're taking that. Another thing with the Lupron is it lowers your bone density levels. So whenever I was dancing, my bone density levels were very high, but then when I kind of slowed down on my dancing, they got very low. So I have to take certain stuff just to keep those up because if they are low, you have a high chance at breaking a bone. Everything I've gone through, whether it's this transition, losing family members, friends and whatever, has been 100% worth it. There's so many misleading topics with the transgender community like you can literally not walk in and just be like i'm a girl today can i have this no you cannot do that i don't know why those types of people think you can do that but you can't for me i did not know anybody that was transgender when i started so it wasn't like a oh i saw someone else do this so i want to do it it just made perfect sense and everything added up so yeah if you guys have any questions you can leave them below and i'll do another video about answering your questions man was grooming himself at the mirror sink trans people we need to be realistic. If you know you look like a full-grown man, then you know damn well you should not be in women's spaces. And I'm speaking- Girl, this is not the take that you think it is. Like, out of love, I feel like there's a lot of internalized misogyny and internalized transphobia at play here. See, because you and I, Eden, we have a lot of privilege that the average transgender woman does not have. We both came out over a decade ago. We both have had multiple surgeries and we've been on hormones to affirm our genders. And the average person doesn't look at us when we're out in public and assume that we're trans. And while this gives us, you know, a certain level of safety and privilege, at the end of the day, people who hate trans people hate us no matter what we look like. You know, you and I are both survivors of assaults due to being trans. So, like, 
Let's, let's do some critical thinking. Access to medically transitioning has become harder than ever with so many states trying to outlaw access to gender affirming care for people who are even adults, not even just kids. Planet Fitness is a company that is known for being a safe space for everybody. No matter what their situation is, whether they're facing housing insecurity or not, because it's an affordable place where people can go and work out, use the restroom, and be treated with dignity. In order to sign up for a membership at Planet Fitness, you have to be 18 years or older or have parental, you know, consent in order for you to sign up. Trans people shouldn't have to look a certain way or blend into society in order to receive the same level of respect or rights that anyone else does. I am tired of the trans medicalism that so many trans people who are binary and who have cis assuming privilege try to spread. Like trans people are trans and valid and worthy of the same rights and dignity as anyone else. They shouldn't have to have certain surgeries or look a certain way. I'm honestly disappointed and really tired of all of the fear mongering going around about bathrooms. Like, Trans women are not the issue. Trans women are not the ones in bathrooms attacking trans children. You know, the possibility for a man to enter a woman's bathroom to attack a woman is just as likely whether or not we try to police trans people. And trans people are already under attack and being policed. So, like, let's just maybe not because the people that we're actually afraid of are cishet men who enter women's restrooms to do bad. If a trans woman enters a bathroom and just needs to use the bathroom, use a changing room, shave in the sink, she should be allowed to do so. This trans woman was causing nobody harm, and the woman who took a photo of her without her consent in a bathroom, like, that's that's ugly behavior. That's not okay. That's what's dangerous to me. Like, I'm glad that that woman who took the photo was banned, and I think that... This trans girl is in the right. She deserves to shave in a bathroom if she wants to shave in a bathroom. That's not doing anyone harm. The ongoing like reasoning behind this thought process of of t attacking trans people is under the guise of protecting children when the people who are being attacked by and large in our country are trans children. The number one killer of children is guns, but I don't see you here talking about banning guns. <laughs> At the end of the day, bathrooms are just a microcosm that are used as an example um, to fear monger in order to attack trans people. Trans people just need a pee, so let them. And there you go. I hope you did learn from what they shared for today's episode. And also, I hope you would continue to respect each one of our transgender all over the universe. Have a great day. See you to our next episode. Bye for now. Raise your flag.